Hey guys, welcome to Safi Mixed. In this video, I will discuss a technique for checking the validity of a quantum mechanical wave function. That is, whether a wave function correctly represent a quantum mechanical particle or not. So, we will learn how to know whether a given wave function is physically valid or invalid. With this aim, I would like to begin from one very specific wave function that serves the purpose of this video, that is, we can check the validity of wave function. So let us begin from a wave function of the form psi of x in t equals a times x times exponent minus iota omega t, where a is the normalization constant, x is the position, and t obviously times a omega the angular frequency of the wave and obviously i is the uh, complex identity this is a special wave function in a sense that it is factorized in time and position and we know such wave function corresponds to stationary state so this is a wave function which corresponds to stationary energy states but we still need to check whether this is a correct wave function or not. So being factorized, we can write this equation in the form psi of x in t equals phi of x times chi of t. That is, I have observed the normalization condition into wave function phi, which represent the position dependency and have multiplied the wave function uh, representing the time dependency in the form of chi of t. In other words, I have written phi of x equals a times x and chi of t equals exponent minus iota times omega t. Now, to check the physical validity of this wave function, we use the already known fact about wave function. That is, there are four conditions on wave function to be physically valid. The first one, the wave function must be continuous. The second one, the wave function must be single valued. The third one, it must be uh, finite and square integrable. So, from the linear dependency of the wave function on position x, we, we see that it is continuous and single valued. However, we need to check by making calculation whether or not it is finite in square integrable. To do this, I need to proceed as follows. That is, I want to integrate the modulus square of the wave function. So I write the integral from minus infinity to plus infinity, the modulus square of psi xt over uh, dx, the space, over the whole space, that is dx. Now, putting the values, I can write the, uh, the, the right side of this as minus infinity, integral from minus infinity to plus infinity, the steric of psi of x in t times psi of x in t integrated over the space dx. And if I substitute the values, I can further write it as a times x times exponent plus iota omega t. Keep in mind, I'm changing the sign of omega because I'm taking the steric of the wave function times a times x times exponent minus iota omega t. The two exponents in the two brackets cancels with each other and I'm left with a squared x squared times dx and taking the normalization constant out of the integral and write the integrating x squared, I can write a squared, a squared multiplied by x cubed divided by 3 and putting the limit from minus infinity to plus infinity. Whether I put plus infinity or minus infinity into this result, both goes to infinity. So the wave function is not finite, rather that diverges. Such wave functions has no physical meaning. Therefore, quantum mechanically, this is not a valid wave function. So if you are given a wave function, you first need to, to, to check whether the given wave function is physically valid or not. 
and for validity you need to check whether the function is continuous single valued finite and square integrable if all these four conditions are satisfied simultaneously by a wave function only then that is a physically valid function otherwise it is just a function that is not physical okay at the end i would like to remind you to hit the like button on the video and subscribe to safi next thanks for watching